Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I'm here at PAX Unplugged with David Thompson, the designer of awesome games such as Pavlov's House and Undaunted Normandy, and most recently, Castle Itter. How's your show going so far? Oh, it's awesome. It's really good. Yeah, here are previewing uh, Sniper Elite, so it's been fantastic. So we'll get to Sniper Elite in a moment, but... Uh, David, first, do you want to talk about how Castle Itter is doing and where that series is going next? Yeah, so Castle Itter uh, just shipped to backers, and I think it's available in retail soon. Uh, it's been fantastic. The reception has been super good. Um, for people that, so you talked about the series, right? So like the what we call the Valiant Defense Series with DVG. So it's the same series that has Pavlov's House. And the funny thing about this series is Castle Itter, though it just came out, was designed before Pavlov's House. So it's funny to see it finally reaching people, right? Even though it was designed literally four years ago. So I know they're both your children, but mm -hmm. do you have a favorite? I can't pick favorites. Um, <laughs> um, oof, that is tough. I think the story of Castle Letter is cooler, right? Like it's the most bizarre story. Like you wouldn't believe it, right? It's like unbelievable. Um, I think I like the the different levels, right, of Paula's House, like the operational and tactical levels. I think I like that gameplay better. So, I love my children equally in different ways. <laughs> and you're going to be having another one soon in the same series. That's true. So uh, tell us about it. Yeah, so Soldiers and Postman's Uniforms will be the third uh, game in the series. So this is another, it's a World War II game like the others, but an, another very obscure topic, right? So literally um, postal opera workers in the free city of Danzig protecting the post office from... Uh, Nazi attack on the first day of World War II, like German attack. So SA, SS troops. So it's an unbelievable story, just like Castle Litter. So you are really a World War II guy. So uh, what are there any other historical eras that interest you, or is this just really your thing? I've noticed, you know, Pavlov's House, Undaunted Normandy, Castle Itter, and now Soldiers and Postmen's uniforms. Do you have any ideas to surprise us with any other wars? So it's a good question. So here's the thing. I'm, I'm actually, I do love World War II, right? Um, the reason I, so each each game has its own story, um, both in like how it came about and also obviously the history. So Undaunted Normandy is based on, like that was inspired by my grandfather, right? Because that's the unit he was in. The other games, uh, the reason I think I've, I've tended towards World War II is because I like to have um, enough historical information at the, literally at the individual level uh, to base the game on those guys, but also I don't like dealing with anything that's modern day, um, as far as like real people. And so World War II is like a really great time period for that. But to answer your question, uh, I love the French and Indian War, right? So if I was going to design a game about a different topic, a war topic, that would probably be my first choice. So and, I, and I'm a I'm a huge fan of Fear vs. Snow, Seventeen Fifty Four. You name it, if it's World War or uh, uh, French and Indian War, I probably own it. Awesome. All right, so I know that your research into World War II can get pretty intense. So outside of the Valiant Defense series, you're also working on a game about Italian frogmen. Is that yep. correct? So why don't you tell us about the development of – it's by Stealth and Sea. Yep. By, yeah. yeah, so by Stealth and Sea. So that will be the, actually the next game with DVG. It's going to be the first game with DVG that's not part of that series. So in this game, uh, you take the role of Italian frogmen who pilot manned torpedoes. Right, so literally two guys sitting on a torpedo, skimming the subsurface of the water to attack Royal Navy ships. Right during World War II, so it's pretty unbelievable, but it's true. Um, and their biggest success was in Alexandria, where they actually basically sank battleships. Right, so I mean it's kind of unbelievable. Um, so that is something I've been working on for a while now. But talking about the research, right? So uh, if you've read, if you've played any of my Castle Litter or Pavel's House, you know I always have a companion book. Right, which talks about the history and the design inspiration. So we were chatting earlier about an example of that in this game where, you know, we have I have information about the, the ships that were the original targets, and sometimes they had to have alternate targets, right, for the actual uh, attack. But I wanted every ship in port in Alexandria, Algiers, or Gibraltar to be the actual ship that was in port on the day of the attack, which means going back to the original Royal Navy logs, and there's no log that says these are the ships in port at the time. There are just logs that say, hey, on this date, this ship arrived. And you have to go through every log of every activity throughout you know, the next two, three weeks and piece together whether that ship actually ever departed. And so through that process, you get these are the ships that are in port on the day of the attack. 
it, they may or not be relevant to the game, right? Like it, it might not ever impact it, but hopefully people when they play the game see the the history come through in that. So when By Stealth and Sea comes out, you'll be playing the most historically accurate version possible of the <laughs> Italian Frogman's attacks. You might not like the game, but the history's there. The history's good. <laughs> <laughs> so you are here to demo another World War II game, essentially, but it's really different from the stuff that you make when you're by yourself. So talk to us a little bit about Sniper Elite. Okay, yeah. So Sniper Elite is, why, well, like you said, it's it's World War II, but it's very, very different, right? So this is not based on historical truth. This is based on a video game. So this is extremely different for me, right? As, um, but in some ways, you know, the, the way you, you research it is, instead of going back and reading 15 books on the topic, I got the video game and played the video game a ton, right? So... Um, <laughs> Obviously, there's no such thing as a direct translation of a video game into a board game, and we never even tried that. But we definitely tried to take inspiration and the, ten the tense feel that you get in the video game as you're trying to move stealthily or escape from the, the attackers, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's very it's been a very different experience, but it's it's awesome, right? It's been a it's been a year of just very different game design challenges, I guess. Right. So, were you a video gamer before you? were brought onto the Sniper Elite project. Yeah, I probably I might get in trouble with some of the Sniper Elite fans when I say no. So, so um, but no, so I, I mean, growing up, I played video games, right? Uh, I have always like I'll have a game that maybe I play for a little while, um, but I'm not a video. I don't own a bunch of consoles or whatever. So when um, Rebellion asked me about the design, I I knew of the game, but I had to go, you know, like okay, now I have to immerse myself in it, and so. Like I said, just like if any other topic, you go and you just play through it, and okay, now I get it, and it's not just enough to play it one time, right? You have to play through every possible situation and make sure you lay off all the equipment and all the loadouts, because I want people to get the full experience of the game. Yeah. So would you say that you're a convert now that you have started playing Sniper Elite? So Sniper Elite's awesome. So I, I do, <laughs> like, it's, it's, here's the thing, and it wouldn't have worked if it was a video game I didn't like, right? So I don't play, like, platform games and that kind of stuff. So if it was that, I don't know how it would have turned out. The fact of the matter is I was lucky that the, the subject matter it was cool. The gameplay is really awesome, so I enjoyed it. Um, so I think it opened my eyes to there's video games that appeal to me, right? So, yeah, I would say I'm, I'm, a, I'm a convert in a very specific small <laughs> section of the video game market. <laughs> So one thing I've noticed about your gaming catalog, which is growing at an impressive rate, is that when you are designing your own games, you really tend towards very historical scenarios. But when you co-design, you tend to go in different directions. So how does that end up happening? Yeah, um, so again, so there's, it's like on the solitaire side, just like you said, I'll find a historical thing that appeals to me, and then I'll craft the game based around that history. Um, and in the case, of course, the Valiant and Defense series, they kind of have some similar DNA that runs through them. Um, but even by Stealth and Sea, which has a very different gameplay mechanism, um, it's just that same sort of historic history first approach, right? When I do co designs, everyone starts differently. And so sometimes I come on to a project, maybe somebody else is leading it, or if I'm leading it, I know that I'm not going to approach it with that same history first mentality. Um, so it just opens up the aperture as far as like what design space we might want to play with uh, and shifting the focus away from history first to whatever the design goal is. Right. So when you are co-designing, I know that sometimes you don't even live in the same city as the people you're designing with. So how does that process work for y'all? Yeah, so I am on Tabletop Simulator. Uh uh, well, let me put it this way. I've logged over 5,000 hours on Tabletop Simulator. So that's a lot of hours of the design. I don't really even do physical prototyping anymore. I, I, so there's, until I get to the late stage where I bring it in front of blind play testers in my local community, um, I don't do any early prototyping. I do everything online now. And so we use a combination of Tabletop Simulator to do mock-ups, which you can also rapidly iterate through prototypes much quicker than you can a physical copy, so it's great. Um, and then just like Skype or whatever the person I'm working on prefers, right? And then this vast library of file sharing that everybody seems to use something different, which gets super annoying. When you, but uh, but yeah, so it, it's it's all online now. Yeah. 
So the other thing I did was thinking about with your co-designs is that the things that you design yourself tend to be very solo friendly mm-hmm. games. Yeah. Uh, whereas something like, I, I know that War Chest is not solo and also Sniper Elite does not solo right now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how does it feel, you know, why do you think that that ends up happening? That you end up designing soloable games on your own, but then in co-design? I mean, d- is that just a natural aspect of designing by yourself versus designing with someone else, a different mindset? Or is it just how it happened to happen? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I would, so if there's not, let me think about this. I think part of it is just how it's happened organically, mm-hmm. right? Uh, certainly part of it is all of those historical games that we've talked about, for the most part, are DVG designs. And I could not, I would not even bring a game to Dan at DVG that wasn't solitaire, right? Because it's DVG. So I kind of know from the outset. But I think what you said is probably the most accurate as far as if I'm designing it by myself and it's about history. And I know that I'm going to be the one who's going to be spending all that time and stuff. I need to be able to play it by myself. And I want to design, I don't like designing a game that is a two to four player game that I design a solo variant. If I'm going to do the design, the solitaire design, it needs to be a solitaire game first. And maybe it'll have like a, a, a variant that's not solitaire, but it, it needs to be that first, right? So I think that's the distinction between the two. So if I do a, a historical game uh, and it's for DVG, or even if it's not, I'll probably make it solitaire primary, right? And then my co-designs will probably not. And if they have a solitaire, it'll be a variant. So I will say, even though I am primarily a solo gamer, we did just play Sniper Elite, and it was really good. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, super tense, right? Yes, yeah, yeah he got me. But <laughs> is there anything else that you want to say about Sniper Elite? Oh, let's see. Um, so it was okay. So this is a little bit of a personal spin on it, yeah. right? So Sniper Elite, uh, the person who's leading up Rebellion Unplugged, right? Which is Rebellion, which is this huge media. I don't even know the right conglomerate in the UK, right? So best known for video games, but comic books, everything. So they decided to stand up for Rebellion Unplugged. And the man leading that up is Duncan Malloy, who I previously knew from um, Osprey. Mm-hmm. And he's the one who, when he was at Osprey, signed Undaunted Normandy. Yeah. And so Duncan and I have worked together since when I first moved to the UK, 2014. Uh, I pitched him Undaunted. And I feel like I've kind of grown up in the industry with him. So it's a really like an honor to be able to do this game with Rebellion and with Duncan. So not so much about the game itself, but just like the the awesome ability to work with people who you love working with to put a game out. So I'm really happy to hear that you're designing on your own and with others is going great. Uh, I'm hoping to see more from you. And before I let you go, um, have you been playing anything solo recently that you've enjoyed? What do you, what's your solo game life looking like? I have the answer for that this time. The last time you had it, I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting this question. Uh, Maquis. Ah, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Another World War II game, let, let me add. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Wait, there's a theme going. So, no, Maquis is awesome, right? And, and so part of the thing is I don't play games a lot yeah. because I have a day job. I have three kids at home, their wife and kids at home. Uh, so I don't have a lot of free time. And when I do have free time, it's designing. So I don't play a lot of games. So my key is awesome because, oh, I've got five, ten minutes. I can just break out my key real quick and play it. And it's super compact and fun and dense. And it's just a really good game. It is gorgeous, right? Like the production's awesome. It is. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I've been playing lately. <laughs> so, David, thank you so much for taking this time to talk to me about Sniper Elite, but also some of the upcoming Valiant Defense stuff. And thanks for sharing a little bit of your process with us. Happy gaming, guys. Thanks. Thanks for having me.